right. Um, Nico, the curious chameleon. Nico was born on a remote and largely unknown island far to the east, where the last members of an ancient Vastayan tribe remained isolated from the rest of the world. They were called the Uvikat and could trace their lineage generations by generation back to the legendary Vastayashire, the ancestors of all of us. I hate when they do this shit. The Uvikat were peaceful beings of unrivaled potential. Their harmonious society blended seamlessly with the spirit realm so that their shoma, their spiritual essence, could intermingle with other beings through mere proximity and even help them mimic other physical forms. No secrets existed between the Uvikat, but a few were as cautious, resilient, or energetic as young Nico. Uh, she developed a fondness for games, hiding trinkets and thoughts to see if others could find them. Her inquisitive nature knew no bounds, and she was pure and innocent in her charmed existence. But it was not to last. <gasps> No! <laughs> Cataclysm loomed on the horizon. Da da da! <laughs> what a sentence. What a paragraph, dude. Um, thanks to the quick thinking and self sacrifice of the Uvikat elders, Nika escaped the death of her homeland. She clumsily took the form of a bird and fled the smoldering destruction, feeling the screams of her people fading into the ethereal gulf between realms. Holy shit. Days later, desperate and exhausted, Nico plummeted into the sea. She clung to Driftwood entirely at the mercy of the currents until an old silhouette rose into view. She could hear voices carrying over the waves, and so she swam towards the strange structure. With the last of her strength, she crept aboard what turned out to be a mercantile vessel uh, destined for Hyrulport. Don't know where that is. Anika rested where she could, calling out into the spirit realm for her lost tribe. She felt only scattered, sad echoes in response, and images of towering dead trees that lay somewhere over a fragile horizon. When Nico emerged from the ship into the city, it was a strange and a familiar new world. All her senses tingled, many a creature, even another Uvakat, might be afraid in this situation, but not Nico. The society bustled with unique personalities, strangers with a vast array of motives and shapes. This was a place of countless stories and experiences, and it entranced her completely. Before she could get far, she was spotted by a Vestayan sailor named Kret. Uh, Nico could not understand all his words, but he demanded to know which tribe she belonged to. Nico reached out with her Shoma, mimicking his face and expression to make her peaceful intentions understood. But Kret did not seem to like this at all. Overwhelmed by his darkening thoughts, Nico fled into the crowd, altering her shape many times until she escaped. Surrounded by lush tropical greenery in the hinterlands beyond Harrowport, Nico grappled with her recent experiences. She simply could not understand how anyone might rely solely on words as their singular form of communication. It seemed so limiting. Seeking solace, she took on the shape of the sleek jungle cats she encountered among the trees and tried to run with them. Nico loved being fast and agile, and their bright, keen eyes reminded her of home, until quite unexpectedly, the leader transformed into a beautiful, strong, dark-haired woman. <laughs> uh, they just kind of skipped over the furry apocalypse there? Yeah, kind of. After a tense standoff, she introduced herself as Nidalee and reluctantly accepted Nico into the group. Nika hesitated to entrust the truths of the Uvikat to others, but she felt a deep kinship with Nidalee because she suspected this bestial huntress might share some forgotten connection with the Vestayan race. Their friendship blossomed, and for many months they roamed the wilds together. 
but the towns and cities with all their flaws still call Taniko. Her ancestors come to her in dreams, showing her the pale branches of those dead trees over and over. The trees needed a color to bloom again, of that much Nika was certain. She asked her friends to join her on this new journey, but Nelly could not be persuaded. Crestfallen but determined, Nika set out alone. Her old life among the Uvikat may be lost forever, but Nika envisions a magical future, a larger tribe of like-hearted Vestaya yordles, humans, and whatever other creatures might share her dream. As far as she is concerned, everyone has the potential to find a place in her new tribe. She has uh, pledged to seek these souls out to befriend them and defeat their Shoma with, defend her Shoma with her life. Their Shoma with her life. To know Nico is to love Nico, and to love Nico is to be Nico. <laughs> Interesting. Bedtime stories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just put half the stream to sleep. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I like these things. I used to read a bunch of them, but I don't really have time for it nowadays. But it's uh, kind of an appropriate time with the champ coming out soon enough. 